Welcome, this is Terry Ewell, and in this short video I will be presenting the alternate F-sharp key on the bassoon. This is a key that's often neglected by beginners, but really is quite useful, particularly for the intermediate to advanced player. There's three reasons for using this alternate F-sharp key. First is to smoothly transition from F-sharp 2 or F-sharp 3 to another note that uses the right hand thumb for the fingering. In addition, it's uh, absolutely essential for uh, speed of motion between notes again using the F sharp and the right hand thumb. And last of all, uh, many players use the alternate F sharp to tune the F sharp 3, that is the F sharp above open F, because this note tends to be a little sharp. The alternate F sharp fingering is one that is just slightly lower in pitch. Let's talk about proper use of the key. First off, this is the alternate F-sharp key. It's a key that is set above the F key here. And I'd ask you to get out your bassoon and test this out for yourself. If you press down on the key here, further up, it's really quite difficult to depress the key. If you press, however, at the edge here, it's much easier. This is a lever, and obviously at the end of the lever, it's going to require less effort to, to move the key. So this is one of the keys for using it. Many beginners get um, have the wrong impression that they need to put their little finger way up here and they find it consequently very hard to activate the key. Instead you only need to get just the edge of that key to activate the F sharp key. Let's give a few examples in music so you can understand the use of the alternate F sharp key. This first example is from the Orifici Melodic Studies number two and you can see one note where I have an upside down A over that note. The upside down A is the symbol that I use in music to represent an alternate, uh, an alternate fingering, in this case the alternate F sharp fingering. In this case I'm going to use that alternate F sharp fingering because I go from an F sharp to an A sharp, and here's the demonstration of that measure. Now, in this case, I could have leaped the right hand thumb and gone from F sharp to A sharp, but you can see there's a wide distance in this leap. If I had to slur this, it would be impossible to do that without some sort of grace note. But if I do this with the little finger, I can make it very smooth, and in fact, I can have a lot of speed. I couldn't possibly do that with the right hand thumb. And that's about as fast as I can move with the right hand thumb. So it's quite essential to work this into your technique. And in fact, as you're practicing your arpeggios, the F sharp major arpeggio will need to use this fingering, and you should regularly work that into your technique. The next example of interest for us comes from Orifici Melodic Studies number three, and this is unusual because we have two areas, two uh, parts of the music, where we need to um, get the technique of moving from the F key to then the F sharp key. The first one is approach from G flat. If you notice, for the high G flat, I'm using this fingering, and then for the F sharp, I just rock my little finger. I don't slide my little finger. I just rock it, catching the end of this F sharp key to activate it. And 
from there I then go on to the B flat. We also have approaches to this from low F or even the lower octave. And this is the next example also found in Orofici number three. Didn't do it too well that time. But you can see start on low F and then move up for that. Well, I hope this video has been helpful for you. Not only do you need to use this little finger F sharp or the G flat key for approaches to B flat, but you might also need to use that for approach to E flat if you use the right hand thumb for that or any other fingerings that require that right hand thumb. Thank you. God bless.